We are the Golden Apple Award Committee. Um, we're just going to introduce ourselves quickly. My name is Evelyn Plonsker. My name is Emily Bergstrom. And my name is uh, Maddie Mayer. Uh, on behalf of the 2021 committee, I would like to thank you all for joining us tonight to recognize Dr. Pinerjeet Gill of the Asian Languages and Cultures Department as the 31st winner of the Golden Apple Award. For those of you who may not know, the Golden Apple Award is the only campus-wide award for faculty members that is exclusively run by students. For the past 30, 31 years, this award has, been, has recognized the exceptional students, exceptional professors at this university and the enormous impact they have made on their students' lives every day. We are very honored to be presenting such a meaningful award. The award's history stems from the teachings of a rabbi 1,900 years ago who wrote, get your life in order one day before you die. Teachers who walk into classrooms every day as if it were their last exemplify a level of dedication that should not go unnoticed. The Golden Apple Award recognizes professors who display this unwavering commitment to teaching by giving them the space to deliver what they would envision to be their last lecture. Hopefully this is not your last lecture, Dr. Gill, and you will continue to inspire and support students for many years into the future. Right now, I would like to share with you a few comments students made that demonstrate the kind of compassionate teacher and exceptional leader that Dr. Gill is. One student wrote, Professor Gill is not only a wonderful teacher, you can tell that she truly cares about all of her students. She is very passionate about the material she teaches us and makes me want to continue my efforts in the subject post-graduation. She makes the classroom environment very collaborative and fun. She has told me that post-graduation, I can reach out to her via email with any questions or help in continu continuation of learning this subject, which shows that she goes above and beyond as a professor. Another student wrote, throughout the time I have taken Punjabi with Dr. Gill, I have always admired her, admired her dedication to her students and the Punjabi language. Dr. Gill is the most accommodating and thoughtful professor that I have had during my time at UM, which is why I believe she deserves the recognition as Outstanding Teacher of the Year. These are just two student quotes of many that exemplify how much Dr. Gill truly cares for her students and wants them to not only learn, but excel inside and out of the classroom. As a student, what struck me the most was in the many nominations we received, the word accommodating. With the uncertainty that we have had in the past year and a half, we truly value the professors who have allowed extra support and accommodations in this intense stress. So thank you, Dr. Gill, for your unwavering dedication to your students and care for their well-being. Now, before we um, invite Dr. Gill to the stage, I would like to thank a few of the people who have supported the committee this year to make this event possible. First, I would like to thank the support given to us by Hilal, specifically our advisor, Rabbi Lisa Stella, as well as our graphic designer, Michael Ottman, who assisted Maddie in designing the promotional materials. In addition, I would like to thank the CCI major events team, Michigan Media, and specifically Darren Martin for set assisting with the setup for this event. It was not an easy task trying to navigate how to make this event possible with the uncertainty of the world around us. The event this year could not be possible without the, without the contributions from all the academic units, offices, and departments listed in the program. Thank you all for sponsoring and distributing materials to the students and faculty. I would also like to thank all the students who gave their time to nominate their professors and to those who left thoughtful comments like the two I previously shared. And lastly, I would like to thank the Golden Apple Committee who put in many hours of fundraising, tabling, and advertising to help make this event possible today. And I think we had fun doing it too. This, this evening, we have the pleasure of hearing Dr. Gill give her powerful last lecture titled Diversity Makes Us Stronger, Language as a Bridge. So without further ado, I produce I present Dr. Pinderjeet Gill, the winner of the 31st Golden Apple Award. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. How are you doing today? Thank you. Namaste, Namaskar, Satsriyakar. I would like to start off by saying thank you, huge thank you to everyone for being here on a Friday evening and sharing your valuable time with me. Thank you. I would like to express my heartfelt thanks to the Golden Apple Award Committee for selecting me and my wonderful students 
for nominating me, my intelligent and loving students with whom I have spent almost 16 wonderful and quality years, not only teaching them, but also learning from them. To my students, you are the reason that we are all here today. You are the reason that I have won this award. We have won it together. I would like to show my appreciations for you all. For my students who are here, current and former, please stand up so we can show you our appreciations together. Please stand up. Thank you. This is truly a great honor for me. I also wish to thank you, my fellow instructors, my esteemed colleagues, my Asian Language and Culture Department, everyone at the Language Resource Center. Finally, I would like to thank the university for trusting me with the responsibility of teaching. I am fortunate to be a part of this wonderful, wonderful institution. I appreciate each and every one of you who is here to celebrate this moment with me. Thank you. I feel humbled and empowered by this award. It motivates, motivates me to better myself as a teacher. I also want to express gratitude to my husband, my children, my parents, my relatives, and my close friends for all their support over the years. Throughout my time at Michigan and for everything else in life, my husband has played a central role to keep me going at every step. It would not have, have been possible without his motivation and emotional support that I get from him. I would like to recognize all my colleagues my department, and my former and current director for their continuous support. Thank you all for joining me here today. I would like to begin by telling you about myself and my journey. I was born and brought up in Punjab, India. I lived in a small village with my extended family. It was a very well-knit community. Everyone knew each other and helped each other. Every day before school, I would find my mother would be up before anyone else. She would make sure I was ready for school on time. She wouldn't ever let me miss a day of school or miss any school work, and she was a tough tax master. After school, I would see other students playing in the village. Obviously, I wanted to play too, but my mother wouldn't allow me to play until I had finished all of my school work. She was very disciplined, and she kept me motivated. She was always there whenever I need her, and especially from the kindergarten to until university. It was because of her support and dedication that I was able to see value in education and understand why it was so important to her. The credit goes to my both parents, but especially mom, for where I am today, her support throughout my childhood kept me going. After I finished high school, I was the only girl in my extended family who went to college. By the age of 27, I had earned my PhD. My mother, my mother has always been passionate about learning and she herself wanted to go to school when she was young. Due to the partition of India and Pakistan in 1947, and during the greatest migration of human groups in modern times, 
my, my parents' family had to migrate to India, leaving behind everything they owned in what we know as Pakistan today. There were many families that were displaced at that time, and many, many children were separated from their families or were lost. But that story for another day. Coming back to my mother, her family moved with the relatives to the Indian province of Uttar Pradesh, where she lived for part of her childhood. Because of these difficult circumstances, my mother was not able to go to school. My mother set out live my mother set out to live out her dreams through me. I hope her dreams has come true today. Not only have I had the opportunity to be an educator at one of the top universities in the world, but I have also been honored with such an esteemed award. Thank you, Mummy Ji and Daddy Ji, for believing in me and showing me the right path. Though you are not here today in this event with me, I know how proud you both are. My mom, who never went to school, wanted me to be a teacher, and so did I. But I never thought I would be teaching my native languages, Hindi and Punjabi, in the United States. So I could not be happier when in 2005, I was appointed by the Department of Asian Languages and Cultures to teach my languages. I finally got a place where my heart lies, a place my, where my passion for teaching my native language and culture all came together. I have been fortunate and grateful every single day since that very first day I began teaching at the University of Michigan. I came to America with my husband and my infant daughter after a couple of years of my marriage. Being an only child myself, I didn't want to come to America because I wanted to stay close to my parents. They are the most important people in my life. And yet, I left behind a well-established life, family, and friends, and arrived thousands of miles away to this all new world. It is a story we have heard hundreds of times, countless times. It was difficult to find my footing here, for it is hard to cope with a new culture and language completely different from one's own. This journey becomes harder if you are an adult, and I, I, and I was very, very hesitant to communicate in English. Also, my education, the one thing that no one could take away from me and for which I had worked so hard, had no value here. Having a PhD in Hindi and coming to a country where most people speak only English, my whole world had upside down. One evening, my husband and I, very tired, were driving home. We stopped at a red light. A lady pulled up right next to us. She rolled her window. I was very confused and rolled my window too. She must have seen that my husband was wearing a turban. She smiled and said, Sasri Akal, with her hands folded together. Now, think of a very significant moment in your life something unforgettable. For me, it is that random lady in America who turned to us and greeted us in our native language. At that moment, she and I had connected. I felt welcomed. My husband and I were so incredibly happy that someone had recognized us and our culture. There are many families just like mine 
that decided to migrate from their homeland in search of better opportunities for their children. They brought the Punjabi culture and language with them, which is not just spoken or seen in India or Pakistan, but all over the world. Hundreds of thousands of people have migrated outside of Punjab. As a result today, Punjabi language is spoken in almost 130 countries across the globe. Let's look at the Punjabi diaspora. What is diaspora? The literal meaning of the word diaspora is scattering, dispersion. And this diaspora community has also spread Punjabi culture and language to have an impact on the rest of the world, especially in the US, Canada, Australia, and England. Words from different languages are getting universal recognition and so do words from South Asian languages, such as Punjabi, Hindi, and Urdu. I would like to take this opportunity today to talk a little bit about the presence and importance of Punjabi language in the Western world. Also, I can assure you that you would know a few words of Punjabi by the time I finish speaking. Interestingly, the Oxford Dictionary has many Punjabi, Hindi, and Urdu words, especially from clothing and food domains that have been recognized on a global scale. It is interesting to find words like lassi, khichdi, papad, gulab jamun, kyo, masala, puri, taba, chutney in the Oxford Dictionary today. These words denote different things in South Asian culture, things that have traveled around the world with South Asian people. Food binds us as humanity. The words I just shared with you are from the food domain. If you are fond of Indian food, you must already be familiar with a few of these. You may have had mango lassi before or have heard the word masala in the name of many Indian dishes. And who can forget about curry? The typical Indian dish which has seeped into almost every kind of Western cuisine. Well, let me share a secret with you. Indians do not put curry in everything. Curry, yes, spicy gravy, that is. We all eat and we are all deeply connected to food. It connects us to the land to ourselves and each other. So today is a perfect example of understanding how food really can connect us to each other. But enough talk about food. I'm sure you're all are dreaming of food by now. <laughs> so let's divert our minds with a bit of fun. Let's get to know our neighbors, yes, turn to the person next to you. In my talk tonight, I have include, included several activities similar to the ones we do in class. My classes are not lecture classes, rather interactive language classes, and I hope you enjoy these activities as much as my students do. We a lot of communicative activities together. We play games and do role plays and skits. I incorporate many songs and movies in my class to teach grammar and cultural topic. This also gives students exposure to the other voices besides me. I promise you will do the activity, but there will be no quiz today. I promise that. <laughs> I would like you to turn to the person next to you and ask them, what is your parents or grandparents native language? How do you greet? Are there any special gestures and what do they mean? So you have a two minutes, please ask your neighbors.
Thank you. I hope you had learned something new today from your neighbors. Now, if you are able to, please clap or make a sound if you have heard any of the following. Ani, that is Anishinaabe, one of the indigenous language of Michigan. Ola. Salute. Vanikam. Namaste. Satsriyakal. Marhaba. Kamusta. Bonju. Aloha. Chao. Nihao. He. Habari. Kanichwa. Anuhasyo. Hello. You immediately make a personal connection with someone greeting you in your language. This is humankind, simple pleasure, simple connectivity, and that's the power of language. I hope you will try this exercise with your friends and family members as well. You will be surprised to know that India has about 120 languages and more than 20,000 dialects, dialects. Every language has its own greetings. In Punjabi, the greeting is Sat Sri Akal. Sat means truth. Sri is a word which denotes respect. And Akal means timeless, beyond past, present, and future. Thus, the phrase can roughly be translated as Almighty is the ultimate truth, or God is ultimate truth. Another greeting commonly used in India is Namaskar or Namaste. You might know this from your yoga class or from Sesame Street. It means, I bow to you. Most Indian greetings are conveyed with both hands folded and thumbs close to your heart to show that you really mean it. Add a little bow to express respect. Now I would like to show you short video and after that you will practice how to say Sasri Kal in Punjabi. Sasri Kal. Satri Akalji. Satri Akalji. Now please turn to the people around you and greet them with Satri Akal with your hands joined and slight bow. Thank you. Language is not just a mode of communication. It is a valuable treasure of people and reflects the growth of nations. It reveals all the deeper layers of spiritual life of a people, their historical memory, which happens to be the most valuable heritage of centuries. Language is also music, melody, and color of life. It is an art unto itself, and it is the basis of the intellectual and mental activity of any people. Every language is gifted with some beautiful words and phrases that expressions emotions of love, praise, passion, as well as condolences. They are so rich that it would take many sentences to explain the meaning of them. I would like to share some of the words from my native language. As I share with you these words and their meaning, I want you to think of the corresponding words in your language as well, please. Let us start with the word, balle balle. It is used as an encouragement and depicts a feeling of happiness. It is used in the same way the expression, hooray, Balle balle when said twice actually amplifies the meaning. Balle balle, 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 balle balle
filthy mad parcel. Sometimes balle balle is also uttered when you greet someone at their arrival. It shows your excitement. Balle 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 balle. However, in the following context, Balle Balle is being used as an introduction to a statement being made in folk poetry. Most of the time, this word doubled up is used in combination with another doubled up expression, it is shava shava. It is also an encouragement. I hope you had enjoyed these videos. Next beautiful expression is Sadke Jama, Main Wari Jama. It is common expression heard among mothers from Punjab area that roughly means your mother is willing to sacrifice herself to protect you. There is an alternative for Sadke Jama phrase which is Main Wari Jama. Both have the same meaning. Usually older women, figures like a mother, or grandmother would use this expression to convey their love for their child or grandchild. This expression does not come alone. It is often accompanied by the gestures like this sometimes. So now you will see in the context, Sadke Jama, Main Wari Jama. Maanji, Main Barli Kothi Wale Deep Singh Tilo Na Pati Ja, Te Main Jeetil Mil Ke Aare. मंजिंदर तू मंजिंदर हा मेरा मंजिंदर वे मैं सदके जावा मैं बारी जावा सचिया पाचा खुशियां देती हैं तू मैं नू मेरे कार मैं सदके जावा माँ सदके नी माँ सदके आगे मिल गई थी हैं नी मैं बर्थ चला देख ला नेक्स्ट ब्यूटीफुल वर्ड इस मेहरबानी शुक्रिया तनवाद नाउ I would like to request you, please turn to your neighbors and say Meherbani or Shukriya. If your neighbor says one, you say the other one. So you have one minute for this activity. Thank you. Meherbani, shukriya. Many languages have some polysemic words, which are words that have many meanings or generally communicative expressions. All of those different meanings come from a common origin. Sometimes what makes a language interesting in the variety of ways in which these are used. 
For example, the word what has simple me word but has multiple meanings depending on how it is used in a sentence. The one common trait of most of its meaning is the idea of something being crooked or not straight. What means edge, especially of a field or a border. Another meaning, twist, may be in a rope. What is also hot and humid, and it also means anger. What in a garment means wrinkle that you wrinkle that can you can iron out. And what also means pain, especially in the tummy, and what also is a wick of earthen lamp, as in Diva Divat. But not least, what also means to make money out of something. What an amazing word. And think about how simple it is pronounced as in what or what. This is one word that an English speaker would utter tens of times in their day. Similarly, there are multiple words in Punjabi which carry a whole different meaning when their intonation changes. One of them is acha. Acha, when used with a certain tone and expression, the meaning of the word change. A common word used while gossiping. Acha. A prompting someone to talk. Acha. Acha could also mean I'm good, matcha hum, or agreement, simply okay. Acha. Surprise. Acha. <laughs> or acknowledgement. Ji acha. When used with a question mark at the end, it could, it could be used to express curiosity, Achha. <laughs> to confirm something. So let's watch a Bollywood Hindi movie clip to see a few different expressions of Achha in a more dramatic way. Let's enjoy the video. <laughs> और बोलो अच्छा है अच्छा है मतबल सब ठीक ठाक है वेरी गुड आंख बड़ी करके बोलो अच्छा है तो मतलब साफ माँ है तुम्हारी अम्मा का एक्सीडेंट हो गया अच्छा साफ फिर गुस्सा आता है तो आवाज लोड हो जाती है अच्छा हमको सिखा दिया है अच्छा और जब सोचते हैं तो लंबा वाला अच्छा अच्छा शब्द के साथ साथ एक्सप्रेशन पर भी ध्यान देना पड़ता है Another common type of, the, of word is a homonym. Homonyms are the words that sound the same and are spe spelled the same, same way but have different definitions that are not correlated. In Punjabi, bus, pronounced as bus, has a few different meanings. It can be used in multiple ways to express multiple states of minds or message, messages, stop, enough, or that's all. A fun suggestion, remember to use this word when you are visiting a Punjabi household or they will keep stuffing you with the food they have to offer. If they are feeding you something and they, they offer you second helping of something, they will keep on pouring that stuff into your plate until you say, bus, bus. And to make it more emphatic and also raise your hand to convey the message. We are that attached to this word. See how much a Punjabi teacher can help you. Language teachers play a big role in connecting cultures with language. A dictionary can't give you as much as context as a teacher can. Now, you also need to remember that Punjabi has not had an isolated existence. Just like other languages, Punjabi too has an interesting pattern of overlap with different languages. You will find words some sounding similar to the one in Punjabi that also means the same. For example, the word for mother in different languages sounds pretty much same. Madre, Mama, Mater, Amma, Mai, Ammi. Similarly, the Punjabi word for mother is Mata, Ma or Maji.
Punjabi, also like other languages, has many words that are untranslatable. For example, Jutha. There is no English translation for this word because there's probably no concept of Jutha in the cultures of native English speakers. Jutha. Jutha in South Asia is used for food that is left on your plate than one did not finish. In other words, the word food, uh, in other words, the food has someone's germ on it or it became impure, so to speak. Culturally, we do not give jutha food to anyone, even our own children. If something is on our plate or in your glass, we do, not, we do not share it. Here I see people eat on the same plate and sometimes eat from the same spoon, especially pre-COVID, COVID, which is not permitted in South Asian cultures. Though, now the new generation do not follow this very strictly. All of this and many other things like this are there for hygienic reason, so as not to make others sick. Now, I would like to ask the audience to please share with your neighbors a favorite untranslatable word in their native language and what it means. You have a one minute to do this activity. Thank you. I'm positive that there are so many words you know that are not translatable. Coming back to food, we cannot leave the word roti out. The traditional round flat bread eaten in South Asia. When you think bread, you have a different image in your brain versus roti. Roti, a round flat, Unleavened paper thin bread, usually made of whole grain flour and cooked on a griddle. Maize flour, ragi flour, gram or millet flour have traditionally been used as healthier choices to make roti across the rural Punjab and many other parts of India until the mid 20th century when wheat became the staple grain instead. Teaching Punjabi and Hindi languages for me is not just about teaching vocabulary and grammar structures. My goal is to show my students the path. They create and reach their own destinations. It is about building connections with our students, a relationship that lasts forever. This is what teaching and caring is all about. It makes me so happy when my students maintain contact with me and tell me about their new jobs, accomplishments, and some even invite me to their weddings. I'm proud to share that some of my students are so passionate that they are taking both Punjabi and Hindi, learning a third language which is not even part of their requirement. It makes me so happy to know they, know they understand and appreciate the language and the culture and that they will apply this learning and this passion in their lives. Language teachers and their language, uh, uh, languages are working as bridges between two cultures and two people. The more you learn about a language and culture that is different from yours, the more it helps you understand the whole world in a better way. Let us take some time to talk about culture at this point. When you think of culture, what comes to your mind? Thoughts, values, customs, symbols, behaviors, rituals, 
clothing, food. Every group of people take pride in their cultural uniqueness. All communities rejoice in the richness of their own cultural symbols, be it dress, cuisine, architecture, language, or way of life. Language and culture are inseparable. Language develops as a way to express the culture, and language shapes culture. You cannot separate learning about a culture while learning a foreign language. By learning about the culture, the learner can better understand the language, understand its subtle nuances. For example, if you do not know the word, cultural value and history of a phrase or word, you could misuse it and end up offending those you are trying to reach with your communication. Now, the next step. Let us deal with some words and their linguistic nuances conveying respect. In the majority of South Asian cultures and subcultures, respect is important to convey when speaking to your family members, especially anyone that is older than you. It is also important to convey respect when speaking to someone in a formal or a professional situation. This respect would be conveyed through every parts of a sentence, in pronouns, in relationship titles, and even verb forms would be modified to convey this regard. Here is an example. In some Western countries, one addresses the teachers or professor by their first name. In many Eastern countries, especially in India and Pakistan, you would hear me addressed as Pindarjit Ji instead of Pindarjit. Ji is an honorific use, used as a fix with the names of one's elders or age in, or in hierarchy. It has many other meanings and connotations. G has three main uses in Punjabi and Hindi language. It means yes in Hindi and Punjabi. Informally, one would say ha huh, literally means yes by itself, but if you're answering to an elder person with a yes, then you would add a G as in Han G. G is also a prefix or suffix used at the end of titles or sentences as a sign of respect. Remember, Sasri Akal. Now turn to your neighbor whom you respect and greet them with Sasri Akal Ji or thank them with Meher Bani Ji or Shukriya Ji and please don't forget to smile. Shukriya Ji. Ao Ji, Ji Ayanu. Here is an example of the use of Ji with expression. Ao Ji, Ji Ayanu. Ji Ayanu means welcome. Ao Ji means please come. Now, I'm going to play a song. And if you were my students, I would ask you, ask you to stand or sing along every time you hear G. You are welcome to sing along now too. Oh, yeah. 
you had a good time while listening to this song. In Indian culture, we sometimes add the word G at the end of salutations to convey respect. Younger people, when talking to their parents, will automat automatically add G after the designation such as Dada Ji, Dadi Ji, Nana Ji, Nani Ji, Mummy Ji, Daddy Ji. Here is another fun fact about family salutation. Every familiar relationship has distinct name. Especially the uncles and aunts are given a designation or salutation depending on their place in the family and which side of the parents' marriage they belong to. So there is, there is a differentiation between uncles and aunts, maternal or paternal, depending on who's older and younger and on whose side of the family they are on. One example is the father's brother. If uncle A is older than your father, their relationship with you is that of Taya Ji. And if they're younger, they are your Chacha Ji. Likewise, their wives are Tai Ji and Chachi Ji respectively. So next time, you're talking to your parents or grandparents, use G. When you greet your professor on Monday morning, don't forget to use G. Say good morning, Professor G. <laughs> In Punjabi, there's a formal and informal way of saying you. Tu is the informal, informal way of saying you and is used with people you are close to or have a great intimacy among friends or people the same age or younger than you. You also sometimes use tu when talking to God we are that informal with that force. Tusi is used formally with those who are older than you or is used in formal situations. Usually when speaking to a stranger, we would, we would also use Tusi. This is similar to other languages such as Spanish and French. In Spanish, tu is also used as an informal word for you. The formal word for you is usted. To learn a little bit more about Punjabi scripts, we need to emphasize the geographical landscape of Northwestern India. Punjabi was born in the fertile land of the rivers Indus Basin. There are five rivers that run through this region. They are Jhelum, Chenab, Ravi, Bias, and Satluj. These five rivers give the reason its name, Punjab. Panj meaning five and ab meaning water, borrowed from Persian language. Over the span of thousands of years, multiple Punjabi dialects are still the common bond of people of diverse faith, tra traditions, and cultures. Despite the fact that various rulers over centuries have used different official languages, Punjabi remain the main dialogue of the people. Punjabi is unique among South Asian languages because it has two scripts, Gurmukhi and Shah Mukhi. Gurmukhi is used in India, also known as Panthi Akri, used by East Punjab in India, and Shah Mukhi, which is common with Persian Arabic script in West Punjab in Pakistan. The Gurmukhi script means from the mouth of the guru or teacher. Was standardized by the second guru, Shri Guru Angad Dev Ji, during the 16th century. Here is an example of Meherbani and Shukriya in Gurmukhi and Shahamukhi scripts. Shahamukhi literally means from the king's mouth, is a local variant of the Persian Arabic script. Shahamukhi script was first used by the Sufi saints of Punjab to write their poetry in Punjabi language and became the official writing style for West Punjab. This is the script in which well renowned poets Baba Farid, Shah Hussain, Baba Bulle Shah, Sultan Bahu, Varish Shah, 
wrote beautiful Punjabi poetry. The Shah Mukhi text is written from right to left and is read from the right page to the left page. Gurmukhi is written from left to right just like English. It is all Punjabi and we can understand each other speaking. It is just written differently. Punjabi is a very comprehensive language. It is said that it adopts almost every variety and all sounds known in the world so far. It has the unique characteristics of being a complete language that allows users to wrote most of the words from any other language in Punjabi script. Many people are using many different ideas, art form, written and oral forms to promote Punjabi and other languages. Some of the examples are of the Punjabi alphabet incorporated into art like wallpaper, wall hanging, henna, and calligraphy. Just like other rich languages of the world, Punjabi also is full of stories passed along as an oral history from generation to generation. The influences of the life and times of poets and historians are also countless. Alongside, a number of other languages have impacted Punjabi because people from many different parts of the world came through, through Punjab to trade in India. Its history and literature is very rich and diverse as a result. The essence of Punjabi vocabulary and literature lies in farming and nature due to abundance of water, due to the five rivers. And this abundance reflects not only the writings, but also resonates in its rhetoric. As a Punjabi culture is immersed and born out of agriculture, it makes sense that its literature also uses agricultures in its metaphor through nature, flowers, milk, butter, kyo, domesticated animals, and much more. A lot of literature illustrates the daily lives and tasks of farmers that came generation before us. While men worked in the farms, women used to express their emotions through embroidery called fulkari. This art form was used to express their emotions embroidered on different fabric in different colors. Fulkari is a symbol of love in Punjabi culture, which was first mentioned in Punjabi literature in the history or story of Heer and Ranja, an epic of love from the soul of Punjab. Fulkari comes from the words full, meaning flower, and kari, meaning craft. Fulkari is not just an art form. It embodies a cultural legacy and symbolizes the emotional connection between people. In villages across Punjab, women, women, women would sit together as an informal club and embroider flowers into different fabrics. It is an expression of the community of women. These flowers follow different but uniformly accepted pattern and are sewn with a single thread. Fulkari embroidery involves a great deal of patience and love for the person who will receive the fulkari. Fulkari is usually made on dupatta, chunni, or shawl from different fabrics. Each piece is different because it is created with different colors and is unique to the creator that embroidered it. It is made by women for themselves or for other women in their families to pass on their legacy. Many times, Fulkari is given as a gift to sisters, daughters, daughter-in-laws, or granddaughters on their wedding day, as well as to newborn babies to celebrate their birth. An intricately embroidered fulkari would be passed along generations 
through the family. As a family heirloom, it connects the women that makes the fulkari, but it also connects family to their family lineage. There are a number of songs that revolves around fulkari. I grew up seeing other girls and women embroidering fulkari in the village. Growing up, I also made a fulkari of my own with my mother. It was incorporated on my wedding day and now hangs proudly on the wall in my house. Every time I look at it, I'm also reminded of celebrations in my life and most importantly, of my connection to the women in my family. You would be surprised to know it could take up to 10 years to embroider a fulkari. If you get a chance, please go and visit the UFM Kalasi Museum website where you will see these many beautiful fulkaris. What's unique about them is the ever-changing pattern with a birth or a death in the family. You can see how passionate I am about Fulkari and as I am celebrating such a special day, I am proudly wearing a beautiful Fulkari myself. Punjabi culture has been shared all over the world through art and food as we have discussed so far. But it, but it has also been influenced by different diaspora communities. I'm sure everyone knows that, that our neighboring country, Canada's favorite game is sport is ice hockey. Also, it is a known fact there is a prominent Punjabi community in Canada Punjabi is among the five most spoken languages in Canada. Now, going back to ice hockey, a young man, Har Narayan Singh, born in Calgary, extremely passionate about ice hockey, came up with a very creative way to not only express his passion of hockey through Punjabi commentary, but enticed and connected so many senior Punjabi to watch ice hockey. What an ex excellent example of bridging boundaries, cultures, interests through language. Let's watch a play-by-play -play commentary presented by Har Narayan Singh. Oh, slip it, Purcell! Kanya goal! Matthew Purcell! Except New York Islanders! बल्ले बल्ले करवा देती मैट बर्जेल पहला दे दिया गलती थे लम्बा इतने स्ट्रेच पास बहुत ही शानदार पास इतने मिले आ जॉश बेली ते लता बचकार कर देती पक गई नेट दे अंदर दे दा होया अंदर गया नेट दे वैसे उस तो बाद तेरा नंबर मैट बर्जेल किया गोल ने कीता पांच में गली थे कर देती बक ते ठोक देता थले लाद ता बर्जाल पर ओदो तक दा पक भी नेट दे अंदर दे विच सिगी बीट कर गया थे बैश लर्स की तेज इफ्तार फर्दा होया आसम लुक लाइक एवरीबडी इंजाइड दा वीडियो एस यू सा दा शोस होस्ट एड दर ओन पंजाबी एडियम्स सॉंग्स एड अदर फन एफेक्ट्स वाइल कॉलिंग दा गेम it is so captivating that some non-Punjabi speaking people have become fans as we see in the social media post. Lastly, who doesn't know about Pangra? The Punjabi is energetic dance form. Within the Punjabi diaspora, in an effort to stay true to, true to their roots and teach their children Punjabi culture, there are active efforts afoot to teach Punjabi language and to keep certain traditions alive. This is where Pangra played a large role in keeping people close to their culture. Pangra is a Punjabi folk dance which is very popular among all ages groups. 
and genders. The youth form teams and compete against each other in college, <clears throat> colleges on national and international levels. The popularity of this dance has received recognition through people performing on mainstream shows like X Factor and America's Got Talent. Pangda has become so universal today that accomplished teams have been invited to perform during halftime shows in the NBA. Not only in the NBA events, my talented students, members of the University of Mich Michigan Pangda team are going to perform Pangda live after my speech tonight. Please don't forget to encourage them with Balle Balle while they are performing. <laughs> I would like to conclude with a personal story. When I finished my bachelor degree in India and got admission to a master's program in, the, in Hindi, people often wondered why I would enroll for a master's in Hindi. It would be easier to do one in Punjabi as that is my mother tongue. I was very ambitious and I knew if I did a PhD in Hindi, I would automatically be able to relate my entire research back to Punjabi. It was more like, <clears throat> it was more like looking at Punjabi from the lens of Hindi literature and language. Knowing many languages is like having many keys to the same lock. When you learn another language, you get a better understanding of your own language. My students, who are native English speakers often ask me about perfective tense in English or sometime other parallel grammar concepts. In other words, when they are learning Hindi or Punjabi, they are also perfecting their own knowledge of English. This is how I find myself as a bridge between two languages and cultures. The world we live in today is torn through wars and fights resulting from lack of misunderstanding. We may not understand the codes of different languages, may not understand the sounds and grammars of all languages, but by relishing the beauty of these multiple languages, we can actually connect instead of disconnecting. Languages are the bridges open for all of us to cross over to each other and keep us united. Thank you. Mehrbani, shukriya. Now, my talented students will come on the stage and they will perform the Pangra. And please don't forget to encourage them by saying Balle Balle.
Please join me in giving another round of applause to our fabulous dancers. <laughs> Dr. Gill, if you could join us back on stage. So we would like to present you with the 31st Golden Apple Award. Please feel free to join us after in the outer lobby for a brief reception to uh, show our admiration for Dr. Gill and give you a parting favor. Thank you so much. Thanks again for everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you, Maddie, Emily, and Evelyn. Thanks for organizing today. Thanks for, thank you so much. Outside in the lobby, you will also find uh, Zingerman's treats to be eaten after leaving the building due to COVID reasons. Um, and there will also be a guest book for everyone to sign and give their congratulations, congratulations to Dr. Gill. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us.